Welkom by ons gouwe jare. Yes, this is our Golden Years, a regular half-hour magazine-type radio show for older folks. Ja, baie welkom by ons program, hierdie week, weer een baie interessante spijskaart. Ons keer terug na meneer Jacob Skosana van die South African Older Persons Forum. En dan die tweede gesprek met Lance James en ons onderhoud van die week, En hierdie weekse gesprek is baie roerend, het ek het gevind en ek is seker u gaan saamstem. En dan sluit ons met ons medische gleef af, die gereelde gleef, met Ken Mathis, die sielkundige wat praat oor ouwer word. Dit is Profiel. Profiel kyk elke week na organisaties wat daarop ingestel is om ons ouwer mense te help. Meneer Jacob Skosana van die South African Older Persons Forum met die tweede aflevering van ons gesprek met hom. I know of an older lady who ran into such financial troubles that she went and she stayed in the waiting room at the train station. She had nowhere to live. This is the distressing kind of things to hear, isn't it? It is a, a very distressing situation, uh, and in a sense that you know, as, as the most vulnerable uh, group in the country, uh, one would have expected that you know it becomes each and every one's responsibility to ensure that our senior citizens are taken care of, our senior citizens enjoy the protection as articulated in the constitution. Yeah. Having said that, I think until such time that it the issues affecting older person has become everybody's issue and concern, not just the responsibility of government. We will be really coming short mm. in ensuring that older person really enjoy their last days, really enjoy their, their retirement. Because even some of these abuse, uh, and, and not just your mother nature abuse, mm. the majority of these abuse are perpetuated within the family structures itself. Mm. What can ordinary older people do to help you in your work? There are two key issues for me. Number one is for the senior citizen to belong to structures like the local older person structures or the senior citizens clubs. Mm. Because if they are organized, then they, that's where we, it becomes easy for us to reach them. It becomes easy for us to visit them and make them aware of their rights. And make them aware on if... They've got certain challenges, which challenge should be channeled where, and we also help them then in, in those efforts of saying, look, if you've got issue X, this mm-hmm. issue needs to be reported to your Department of Social Development or to Health or to Agriculture or mm-hmm. wherever it goes. But we ensure that it goes to the relevant decision makers and those issues are being taken up. But if they are not related or part of a certain structure, it becomes a little bit of a challenge in that, you know, they just fall down the cracks and we lose some. Yeah. But if they are belonging to a certain senior club, it becomes easy for us to reach them and ensure that they are aware of their rights and they, 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 they really benefit on the rights as articulated by our constitution. In a nutshell, what is your message then to government and to NGOs? The message is very loud and clear, Andre. Let us not forget that... Older persons are also human beings. Older persons are also protected by the Constitution of the Republic. So the rights of older persons doesn't end at 60. We need to take and protect them more than anything else because they are the most vulnerable. And we wouldn't be where we are as a country if it was not for the same older person that we are overlooking today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jacob, I, I'm re- really impressed with what you're saying. Just one last question. Are you finding that doors are easily opened for you when you try to promote these objectives? Uh, another, another difficult one, Andre, because I'll tell you, each province is different. Mm-hmm. Each community is different. But in general, government doors are very much open to us. Mm-hmm where we've got a problem is just the turnaround time in terms of responses. Mm. 
the responses seems to be taking forever to be executed. It's a question of prioritizing things. It is a, a, a question of prioritizing things, but again, it is for me, it's more about the mindset. It is, uh, it, it is about changing mindset because if you're talking older people, uh, you, you're not t- talking priority in some other people's mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, J- Jacob, you know, may you be protected and blessed in the work that you're doing. Um, how, how are you funded? Uh, at the moment, we're struggling, Andre. We are solely being funded by the Department of Social Development. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is really making a difference and enabling us to ensure that we launch the structures on the ground. We organize the senior citizens so that they talk with one voice. Uh, but with the Department of Social Development on its own, cannot simply make a dent or inroads on all overall challenges faced by our senior citizens. We need the buy-in of each and every government department because each and every department have got its constitutional mandate. And the constitutional mandate does not say go and execute excluding senior citizens. It says go and ex- uh, execute this constitutional mandate for the citizen of the republic, which also include our senior citizens. I would think that uh, corporate social investment opportunities exist as well for the private sector, for businesses. How can they contact you? Our office number, Andre, it is 021-422-5286. Yes. Yes. We repeat that, please. It's 021-422-5286. Yeah. Yeah. Or alternatively, they can contact me directly on 072-8363-105. And uh, uh, email address? Uh, I mean, uh, 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 a website? Uh, our website is www.saopf.co.za. And uh, alternatively, one of the reliable form of uh, contact my, uh, will be the email. They can contact me on info, I-N-F-O, at S-A-O-P-F dot O-R-G dot Z-A. And O-P-F, S-A-O-P-F, stands for South African Older Persons Forum. It stands for South African Older Persons Forum, yes, sir. Info at S-A-O-P-F dot org dot za all right that's great thank you very much we'll pass this news on uh, as as widely as possible we're broadcasting at this time on the internet springbok internet radio and thank you so much for the opportunity i just hope it will reach some sector of our community uh, which will make a, a, a big difference in the lives of our senior citizens god bless and, and drive safely thank you so much Andre. bye, bye. Dit was meneer Jacob Skosana van de South African Older Persons Forum. Volgende week het ons een baie interessante onderhoud met Kobus Bester, ja, die bekende uitsaaier wat monitor vir jaren aangebied het. Kobus Bester sal by ons wees. Ek sien daarna uit en ek is seker dat jy dit ook sal geniet. En nou is het tijd vir ons onderhoud van die week. Last week we started a conversation with South African music legend Lance James. And this week we'd like to have him back to talk to us about the challenges of growing older. Hi there Lance, it's lovely to speak to you again. Nice to talk to you again. Thank you for coming back again and inviting me onto your program again. Thank you, Andre. Lance, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to ask how old you are, but I think you're a bit younger than I am, and I'm, not, and I'm 75. Well, I'm two years older than you. My goodness, Lance. I'm 77, yes. I'll be 78 in July this year. Wow. Now, that, <laughs> that gives me hope for my future. <laughs> I don't mind giving my age out at all. People even ask me on stage. They've asked me on radio and magazines, newspapers, with yeah. pleasure. People <laughs> are interested enough to want to know how old I am. I tell them with, with uh, happiness. That's wonderful, Lance. What, what 
let's let's just get to the challenges of getting older. What what have you experienced as challenges? Andre, I don't know if I am experiencing any challenges. I do. I, I, I suppose I walk slower than I did 40 years ago, and I, I dare say I do a number of things either differently or slower or maybe not at all. But I don't think I've, I, I haven't had any difficult times. Somebody said to me the other day, I think it was on my 77th birthday, how does it feel to be 77? And I said exactly as it felt when I was 47. Yeah. I still feel very good. I feel strong. Of course, I uh, I take a bit of medication now and then for this and that. But but I I I don't know. I couldn't answer that person. What does it feel like to be seventy seven? Because I feel same as I did my whole life. I I I, I feel so good. I like to think I eat uh, healthily. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't eat uh, much. Uh, you know, uh, things that I should be eating. Junk food, eat, yeah. Yeah, junk food, yeah. I, I eat healthily. I eat lots of vegetables, and I like to think that uh, they are good for me. I go for walks. I do a bit of walking. Uh-huh. Um, so I like to think that I, I keep myself... I don't even think about getting older. So the old body's holding together, is it? Yes. I mean, I've had my problems. I, I have had a heart attack. I had one in 2010. But uh, I feel fine. Uh, it's never, when I came out of hospital, whatever the doctors did, they did it well. But I came out feeling 100%, and I still do these years later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, we all have, as we get older, we, except you've got that two, two more years of it than me. But, but we've all got our little bits of skitter, you know, th- things that aren't uh, as, as strong as they used to be. I spoke to Gary Player not long ago, and he said, you know, he still does 1,300 crunches a day, by the way. He's and, incredible. And he's 80 years old. So yes. He, he, yes. He, he said to me, you know, you can be old at 40 or young at 80. It depends on your mindset. Would you agree with that, Lance? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I do. I have noticed some people who appear to be old at 40, and I, uh, Gary plays a wonderful example of being young at 80. I mean, he looks... He's still playing his golf. He's still working. He's still out there. He eats. I know he eats very well. And I mean, one thousand three hundred crunches. Yeah, it, crunches a, a, a day. Does he do that daily? Well, I, I I don't know if he does it daily. He just said that he did it the last. You know, the the previous evening. It was after the Sun City Golf. Yeah, I I I'd, I'd read that and I've heard about that. I mean, I think that's incredible. But there's a very good example. Young at eighty. Yeah, and you can be. It's a mindset. Yeah, absolutely a mindset. I agree with you, Andre. Yeah, absolutely. You see, uh, I've, I'm, I'm a strong believer in the saying that mindset materializes in your life. Yes, yes. Yeah, it, it, it is so. It is so true. So it's all up in the mind. If you think old, you will be old. Yeah, but I, I think one of your big secrets is you've kept busy. And I think uh, still loving mm. what I do, Andre. I mean, people have many occasions said to me, aren't you tired of doing that and tired of traveling? Not at all. It's exciting to me. I do get physically tired at times, yes. Uh-huh. I mean, some of the tours are strenuous. Yeah. But uh, I love what I do, Andre. I love walking out and entertaining people. And, and, it's and, just, I'm wonderful. Climbing up the stairs of airplanes and and and, yeah. and, and up, air, up, up, up uh, hotel steps and that kind of it doesn't bother you. No, not at all. Uh, now and then, some of the uh, some days I suppose it might, but it's it's not as not, not as though I look at the steps and think, oh, good heavens, how do I negotiate <laughs> negotiate this? But yes, I suppose I, as I said earlier on, I suppose I am walking slower than I was, etc. So yeah, maybe some stairs or particularly as we carry uh, we carry a, you know quite a lot of equipment with us and yeah. stock of yeah. merchandise and things like that, but. Um, I'm certainly not tired of what I do, yeah. and uh, 
how long have I been in the business? I think it's, I don't know, it must be... 67. Yeah, close to 60 years. Yeah, right, right. On stage and on radio, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm also still running around with cameras and lights and, yes. and microphones and things. I don't run as fast as I used to. <laughs> yeah, well, you're right, though, man. I'm, I'm exaggerating when, I, when you ask me if the steps go climbing up airplanes that scare me. No, they don't scare me, but sure, I probably don't negotiate them as well as I did a number of years ago. I was yeah. once lifted into an airplane after breaking an ankle in oh. uh, in, in uh, uh, southwest Africa then, when I was playing for Richard van der Berg in a, in a movie, a uh-huh. TV movie, Met Liefde van Adel it was called, or something like that. And um, uh, I, I broke an ankle, and uh, they had to lift me up one of these platforms to the rear entrance of the aeroplane because I couldn't walk. And yeah. uh, and uh, Janni Wienand, you remember him? He was the great stuntman. He, he came walking past. He says, Walters, leave the stunts for the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, on aeroplanes, yeah. I, I am... I get excited when I walk on and I mm. see a lot of people are really taking their seats. And I think what I'm going to say now is a, is a policy that I live by. Say hello cheerfully to people and you will start to be, be, be to always be cheerful. I walk around the complex that I live in and I say hello to people and ask them how they are. And I like to think that that works. Yeah. That that works. Friendship amongst people. I really believe if everybody started saying hello to everybody and and being nice to each other, there'd be less crime and yes, uh, ugliness in in the country and any country. Smile and a nod, yeah. Say hello to your neighbour. Yeah. Are you in a, a retirement village or are you still living out there? No, I'm I'm in a I'm in a townhouse complex. No, I'm not in a retirement village now. Okay, yeah. My my wife and I have just moved to a retirement village, and it's it's it's, it's quite an adaptation, I'll tell you, to uh, to to scale down. We had a huge double story house, and then I we had to scale down because we moved into this tiny little place. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and and I literally sat there with two photographs of my children, having to decide which one to throw away. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so I no, I haven't got in. I suppose I will. I mean, my daughters have. Uh, Oh, so I have two daughters, one living in England and one oh, just half a kilometre away from me. Yeah. And they said, Dad, will you consider? Well, I suppose uh, I will, but not just yet. I did. I don't know if you knew, uh, Andre, but I did lose my wife last year. She, oh, I didn't know. I'm so yeah. sorry. She was a Thank lovely you. person. I really yeah. am so sorry. Our, our Thank deepest you. Yeah, condolences. We've been married uh, seven months short of 50 years. Lance... I'm uh, starting a grief counselling group at my retirement village. Oh, yeah. May I speak to you about uh, about de- dealing with grief? How, how do you manage it? Do you know, I manage it, in fact, because I believe that Val is out of the pain and the, her illness, the discomfort of her illness, that she, she, she had a horrible illness. She it was dementia, she was paralyzed, she was oh, mute. Goodness. So I found comfort in knowing that she's not suffering anymore. Yeah. And that played a big part yes. in my handling my grief yeah. Yeah. over Val. And she was out of pain, she was out of this existence. And yeah. that was all it was. She was paralyzed, and as I say, mute. She couldn't even tell me where she was sore. Oh, dear. She was mute. So I knew that, that she was no longer suffering. So I found huge comfort in that, Andre, huge comfort. I was walking my doggies in the, the retirement village where we live, and um, a guy came down with his doggy, and we, we stopped as dog owners, and the dogs sniffed each other, and he and I had a chat. We, we started chatting about, he'd also, uh, we, we just moved into the retirement village. We've been there for two months now. And um, suddenly he, he said, I've lost my wife two months ago. And he, and, he, and he burst into tears, and he fell on my shoulders. And, uh, and I was overcome with, with, with I don't know what, I, I just wanted to help him, you know. Yes. And um, so, so grief is a very real thing. This guy hasn't worked through it. He's, 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 he's really suffering. And when he talks about his wife, he bursts into tears. Now, yeah, well, my, my heart goes out to him. Yeah. Uh, but you know that I still talk to Val at night. I might sit down 
and say, hello, Val, I'm going to watch so-and-so on television now, or I'm going out there. I still talk like that. Well, you must give her my regards because she was a lovely, beautiful person. (laughs) Well, Andre, I will. I mean, you know, I'm I'm having everyday conversations with her. Ah, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, Lance, that, 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 that's so uplifting and encouraging. You know, And you know, Andre, can I tell you one more mm-hmm. thing that I do believe, as sure as I'm talking to you now, I know that this wasn't my imagination or a dream. But Val, shortly after that, she did come and visit me. Wonderful. I, I suddenly sat up and there was Val at the foot of my bed. And I called her name. I said, Val. And then, Andre, she lay across me and then was gone. God, I and got... I think she was just telling me that she's happy where she is. Yeah, of course. I've got tears in my eyes. Uh, well, I've aunts. got tears in my eyes too now, yes. Oh. I, I believe that Val was did come and tell me that she was fine. So I found a lot of comfort uh, in, in, in that, uh, Andre. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Lance, thank you for sharing that. That, that's, that, that, that truly you, is wonderful. Thank Lance, um, is there a last thought you'd like to leave us with? Well, I, I send my blessings to all your listeners, to you and all your listeners, Andre. Yeah. And uh, the suggestion which I said earlier on, and I would like, I live by this, and I, I hope it rubs off on some of your listeners. Yeah. Say hello to people. Yeah. To have communication with people. I firmly believe that people will be happier by doing that. Yeah. Say hello to your neighbor. You, you don't have to know them. Just say hello there. Yeah, yeah. And so if, if that means anything to any of your listeners, then I will have achieved something. I'll be, I'll be happy. You will have lifted somebody, even if just for that moment. For that moment, yes. Yes. Lance, thank you so much, my dear friend. God bless you. And uh, and uh, I, I, I've always watched your career with, 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 with great interest and admiration. And I wish you just a continued great future. Thank you very much, Andre. And my richest blessings to you too and all your listeners. Jare is een gereelde wekelijkse half uur hier op die gunstelang radiostatie. Voor ouwer mense en hulle kinders en kleinkinders, so dat hulle ook kan verstaan wat die uitdagings is van ouwer word. En hier in Gouwe Jare, ons Gouwe Jare, sluit ons die program af met nog een gesprek met Ken Mathis wat gaan gesels oor geestesgezondheidsprobleme wat ouwer mense soms ervaar. Is depression curable? In other words, will it ever happen that you don't need to take medication? You know, there again, I think it's, as we're looking at it now from a sort of medical point of view, is diabetes curable? Okay. We have to look at the person and say, and first of all, understand what their feelings are. Somebody comes to see me as a psychologist and say they're depressed. I need to explore what that means to them. And what it, uh, and perhaps they're not depressed, perhaps they're grieving, perhaps they're angry and they're not allowed to be angry, all those sort of things. Mm-hmm. 
But generally, uh, antidepressants plus counseling or therapy, psychotherapy, really works very well. Mm-hmm. Okay, the, the antidepressant will make the uh, make us tolerate the, the bad feelings without really being too distressed by them. And the counseling will help us understand where these feelings come from. Feelings don't just come from nowhere. Yeah. It's what we've made of our reality and the way we interpret our life that brings on the feelings. So the best thing to do if you're depressed, if I understand you correctly, or you think you're depressed, is to go and see a professional. Yes, go to your doctor. Ask your doctor to make a diagnosis. Okay, you will make a, di- a medical diagnosis. And you can also say, please refer me to a psychologist. Well, I want medication as well as psychological treatment. I think that for me, as I understand it, from my experience as a psychologist, works the best. Do you think that anger or feelings that that have not been relieved can lead to a kind of depression? Definitely, without a doubt, without a doubt. If we're very angry and we don't know it because we weren't allowed to be angry, Okay, we, some of us were brought up in homes where we, we, if we got angry, we were punished. So the message we got is don't be, be angry. But we do get angry. What do we do with that feeling? We, ne- we reinterpret it and we call it depression. Mm-hmm. But it's really anger. Okay, but it's not only the anger. It's other feelings, confusion, resentment, um, bewilderment, all those feelings. And not knowing how I'm going to get out of this, this, this state of feeling bad. That's what makes up depression. You feel painted into a corner. Exactly, exactly that. That's what most people in deep depression say. They feel they can't get out of it. Yeah. But it takes time for them to, exp- to, to verbalize that. Talk about your feelings. This is a general thing. Talk about your feelings and find out what are your feelings telling you. Are you interpreting it correctly? So find somebody who can help you. Not only a psychologist. There's some very skilled people who are not trained as psychologists. Obviously, they can help you. Or but even talk about it. a life's partner or a friend. Yes, ideally. If, you, uh, if you're married and you have a life partner who will listen to your feelings without judging them or telling you not to feel this or not to feel that, who's pretty sorted out them themselves, they will listen to you. Okay. Last thought that kind of occurs to me, Ken, is in your 40 years' experience as a psychologist, have you observed at all that religion can help to play a positive part? Most definitely. One of the turning points in my understanding of psychology and the world was the book I read by Frankl. Frankl was a Jewish person who was thrown into Auschwitz. He survived, and then he wrote a book about it. One of the books he wrote was Man's Search for Meaning. He found, when he was in Auschwitz, that some people just died very quickly because the conditions were absolutely horrific, and other people would survive, and he wondered why. For instance, a young man may... It's just an example, come in and, uh, and through the horror of the place, just give up on life and die quickly. As opposed to sometimes find old women or old men would come in with frail and so on, but survive. And he said, how is this possible? He discovered oh, that those people had some meaning in life that was bigger than the suffering, Okay, yeah. which is what religion is. Yeah. God is larger than suffering. He's God larger than everything. And if we believe that, we never feel isolated and alone and despairing. We know when we despair, our whole body gives in. I mean, we know that the immune system decreases in efficiency when once we despair. Okay, so all these things are complicated; they all fit together. There's not just one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the cure, perhaps, to remain young is to keep involved, keep connected with people around you. Okay, that's how I see it. En dit is dan die einde van ons reeks met Ken Mathis. Volgende week gesels ons met Charlene Vonkel van die Zuid-Afrikaanse organisatie vir geestesgezondheid. Baie dankie vir die lekker saamkuier. Dit is jou oud en vriend André Walters wat nou even rats op sy silver tover telepult spring om te vertrek en uh, dan weer volgende week terug te keer vir nog een kopie thee. Maak een afspraak, dus ons goeie jaren.